I'm curious, gents, have any of you guys ever had a woman in your life try to guilt trip you into something? Maybe it's your new girlfriend. She's trying to get you to co-sign on her new car loan. Or maybe it's your mom. She wants to volunteer you to help move a friend into a new apartment this weekend. At work, you've been labeled the can-do guy. So, guess what your boss has done to reward you? Gents, I don't know about you, but I don't like to be stepped on like a doormat. So, in today's video, gents, I'm laying out how to stand up for yourself like a grown-ass man. You ready, gents? Let's do it. And really quick, in case I wasn't clear, Candy, that woman you met at the Gentleman's Club last week, your new girlfriend, do not co-sign on that loan. With your mom, remind her, hey, I've got family obligation on Saturdays, but here are three phone numbers for moving companies that your friends can call to be able to get quotes. Now, those answers seem obvious, but for a lot of us, let's just face it, we like to think of ourselves as friendly, as nice guys that want to help others. And we find ourselves in situations where we're saying yes to all of these things or they're just falling on our laps and we can't say no to them. Hence, we're overwhelmed. We've got too much on our plates and really it seems like we're kind of being walked on by other people. Gents, I know this because I used to be that guy. So, what changed? How did I stop being a doormat? If I had to boil it down to one thing, I would say it's because I became a more assertive person. Now, in case you're not familiar with the term, assertiveness is a communication style in which an individual expresses their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs in a clear, honest, and respectful manner while also respecting the rights and opinions of others. It involves being able to stand up for oneself and asserting one's needs and boundaries. At the same time, you listen to others. You're willing to compromise. You're willing to negotiate. You want to help. But first and foremost, an assertive man advocates for himself and his own needs first. The idea here is that you need to be in a position of strength. You need to be able to help yourself first before you can help others. We see this all the time. We're on an airplane. You're sitting next to a kid. Okay, before you put the oxygen mask on the kid, make sure that you've put it on yourself. Otherwise, you're going to pass out, right? So, how can you develop an assertive communication style? First up, you want to redefine your relationship with no. You want to become comfortable saying it. And here's the deal. You can be brief. No is a complete sentence. You don't owe people an explanation. Yes, some people will ask for it, most likely your boss, but understand the majority of offers, things that people are asking coming your way, you have the right to be able to say no. I know this sounds so simple, but so many of us are programmed to immediately say yes. We want to help. We want to be that person that steps up. The problem is, if you are constantly saying yes, to good, you're not going to have any room in your life for whenever great opportunities come their way. That's what it reminds me of. I'm always thinking to myself, you know what? If I say yes to this, I'm going to have to say no to another opportunity that could be so much better for me, so much better for my family. Now, the next step to developing an assertive communication style is to know who you are and what you stand for. For a lot of guys, this is simple. They've grown up with a set of beliefs. Maybe it's from religion. Maybe it's just simply the values of their family or they've actually thought through it. And this is one of the hardest things for most guys to do because most of us would rather stay busy than take the time to actually think about where we're going and what we're working for. Seriously, I got to hand it to my deeply religious friends and growing up Catholic, I understand a lot of the, hey, these are the rules. This is how we play and it really gives you a simple playbook for being able to say yes and no to a lot of situations. You know, if you're being asked, hey, I want you to donate time to this thing right here on on Sunday, if you are a religious person that spends your Sundays with God, it's like, hey, I'm sorry, that day is reserved. And I had a great friend. He worked in high level management consulting. And guess what? Saturdays were for family. Sundays were for God. And that was his rules. He did turn down some job offers, but he found a company that would work with him on that. And hey, he had set his boundaries. He understood who he was and what he stood for. So, is Antonio saying you need to find religion in order to make sure people don't step on you? No, that's not what I'm saying. You can be agnostic. You can choose to live however you want, but you need to make that choice. You need to think through what's important to you. What are your values? Honor, courage, commitment, whatever they are, make sure that you align as that type of person because once you've gone there, you're not going to do that because it goes against you are a committed person. You're in a relationship. So, when you have an offer come from, you know, you're with a coworker, she's very attractive, you've had a few drinks, but you know, hey, I don't go past a certain area. I've got boundaries here because I know I'm in a committed relationship. You know who you are and you stay on that path. Now, this word's come up a couple times, but I want to give it its own point and that is setting boundaries. I know for me, 
Time boundaries are pretty important. I've got a bedtime or at least time I like to go to bed. Try to. I've got a time that I wake up in the morning. I've got gym time. I've got certain times that I have for myself and my family because if I didn't set these time frames, then my work, which can become all consuming, I've got five businesses. You can bet that they would come in and eat up my time if I let them. Another boundary is my relationship with alcohol. I've talked about this before, but throughout my family, we've had a number of alcoholics and I realized in my early twenties, I was just, I loved to drink and party and I got arrested for doing that kind of stuff. So, I realized, you know what? This is not the path I want to go down. So, I made a deal with myself and my future wife. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give up drinking. I'm going to stop drinking. And I had a you know very bad incident in Ukraine. Not super bad. I just basically got really drunk in front of her family and threw up on myself. Not the kind of Antonio that I wanted to be. And so, I set this boundary of, you know what? I'm just going to give it up. And at the time, it was good also financially because I really couldn't afford to be drinking and spending all this money on alcohol. So, it had this positive effect on my bank balance and I just started to identify as a person that I just don't drink alcohol. And it is something that was tough because I had so many friends that would want to, let's go out and get a drink. Let's meet up at this bar where pretty much everyone is drinking. The key here though is to identify and see yourself as this type of person. I just gave it up. I realized that I didn't probably have good genetics for being able to handle alcohol and that I looked at who's the person that I want to be. And I made the commitment that I was no longer a drinker. I was just somebody that didn't drink alcohol. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash the like button. Seriously, by hitting that like button, more men are going to find this video. Men that need help because, yeah, they're getting walked all over. Now, really quick, I want to deal with some objections. I know that some of you guys are saying, well, Antonio, at my job in which I am just walked all over, that's not going to fly. If I tried to tell my boss that I've got these boundaries, guess what? I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to get fired. And my response to this is then they're not really boundaries. And let's just face the truth here. You are compromising on these. So, they weren't boundaries. Otherwise, you wouldn't have taken the job. You wouldn't have agreed to showing up and working those particular hours. And I understand you're in a tough situation. You've got a family to support. You have people that are depending on you. And I would say though that you need to recognize this. And this is a really important step. Having the conversation, even if it's just with yourself, preferably maybe writing down in a journal, recognizing that this this situation is not sustainable. It goes against where I want to be, what I believe and how I see myself and my, again, your values, your boundaries. So, start looking for work. All of a sudden, it's going to be more aligned with your values. Again, my friend that was in management consulting, anyone that's worked for McKinsey, Bain, you guys know, I mean, crazy hours that they ask, but he was really clear. I'll be up at three o'clock in the morning on Monday catching whatever flight to wherever you need me, but I'm not flying out Sundays. And he did this early on. He found a company that would work with him on that and, you know, they were able to reach that compromise. <laughs> Now, today's video, gents, is sponsored by Vitamin. I'm one of the owners of the company, so I make sure you guys get the best deal. Seriously, you want to save over 50% on your first essential skincare kit, which comes with everything you need to start your morning and evening routine. 100% natural and organic. Guys, down in the description of today's video, I've got the best deal on the planet. Seriously, gents, take advantage of this deal. It's not going to be around forever. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. And let's deal with the issue of you being attacked or pressured into making a decision right now. This happens at work. This happens with family. You're an event and everyone's trying to get you to commit to, uh, I don't know, maybe taking this family trip that you know is outside your budget. You honestly don't want to be around a lot of the people. You don't have the best relationship with them, but you're being pressured. You're being pushed into this, you know, this new role at work. Again, extra hours that you don't need, you don't want, and you're definitely, you're not going to get paid for. Guys, at this point, you can take a few tactics here. First up, you want to respond on your schedule. Delay the decision. Don't feel that you have to make it right now. They may, you know, be pressing on you, but this is something you can say, hey, you know, I need to check with my spouse. I need to go back and look at my calendar. I need to go back and look at our budget. We really need to make sure we can pay for this. You're going to have to be transparent. You're going to be honest. I always find that's the best way. But if you're pretty transparent with your family about, hey, we can't afford this trip, then that is a legitimate reason. Maybe someone's going to step up and pay for you. Then that's a pretty nice family. I don't know why you don't want to hang out with them. Point being though is you are giving yourself a bit of distance so you don't have to make the decision right now. Can you ask them to clarify the needs? Yeah, that girlfriend that's 
pushing you into co-signing on that house, it's like, okay, wait a minute, we're entering this right here. You understand that this is something that we're not going to be able to get out of, that both of us are going to be on this. You just want to clarify that she understands what co-signing is in the same way that you understand what co-signing is. Because believe it or not, people can have different understandings about what seems to be something that, yeah, it, it, isn't it obvious? Well, the thing is, it's not always to people. And that's why maybe they could be offended because they didn't realize how big of a risk financially this is for you versus for them. Or maybe they did realize it and you realize, you know what, Candy, I'm going to step out of this relationship. You were a good time for a week, but uh, yeah, not long-term material here. And no offense to any women out there named Candy. I just seem to be using this name as an example. And again, if you're being pressured, if you're being attacked, know that stepping out of the situation is always an option. This is big, especially if you've got a spouse and she's pushing. I've had it with my spouse that we have been kind of going at it. And I've simply realized, you know what? We're getting emotionally compromised here. She's crying using, you know, the tears on me. And uh, I've just said to say, hey, love, love. And I call my wife love all the time. It's kind of a hack. And I know that there's some like psycho chick apparently in one of those TV shows called love, but uh, my wife is not psycho. She's great. But there are times that we have our disagreements. And I've just simply said, hey, love, I'm going to go for a walk. I don't want to say anything I'm going to regret and I step out of the situation. I'm not giving up on our marriage or even on the conversation. I just realize I need to remove myself from it before I say or do something that has happened in the past that I end up regretting. So we've talked about becoming more assertive. Now let's talk about some tools that you can use to actually take steps in that direction. Now this first one may seem a little bit extreme, but it's about giving you perspective on the limited time you've got left. So have you ever seen these calendars? They are designed specifically to show you how many months that you have lived and how many months you have left. Now, I know some of you guys may be thinking, oh, that's really depressing, but you know, the stoic in me says, hey, this is what makes life so sweet and helps you really take stock and put more value in the moments you do have left because you've got a very limited resource here time. I know for me, looking at how much time I have left with my son, there's a great example. I've sat there in an article. I'll link to it down in the description. It talks about, you know, when you are 18 and you're about to move out, you really don't have that much time left with your parents. Yes, you'll come back to visit them. You'll see them, but unless you live right next to them, these are people you're probably not going to see on a daily basis going forward. You really only have so much limited time with your kids, with your spouse, with your family, working and chasing your dreams of starting that company, taking that nonprofit to the next level so that you can help and make a bigger impact. I say all this because to me, it gives me the energy to be able to make those tough decisions, to be able to make the changes in my life so I'm not a doormat because when I realize I'm getting thrown other people's crap on me and I'm doing this, all of a sudden I realize I'm not pursuing my dreams and I've only got so much time left and maybe it does create a little bit of resentment, a little bit of anger, but that can be used, you know, not in the Sith way, but basically you guys get the point to be able to make changes in your life so that you're no longer being stepped on. Next up, take your bucket list. Yeah. All the things that you want to accomplish, which do you have one and then run it through the priority matrix. So usually the priority matrix I reserve for work, but what I like about this is you can see things which are urgent and important. And you can realize that most things are non-urgent and non-important that are on your daily to-do list. And what things are you doing that are aligned with, you know, I know for me, building my dream home. We've been pushing harder, just bought a lot, really excited about this. But I realized, my gosh, my son is heading off to college. He's never really going to live in this. Now we have a new baby. So, you know, I'm keeping the cycle going. Point being is I realized, you know, we need to move in to this new home. I need to build this place because I keep talking about it. And if I don't take and make sure my goals are aligned in that direction, then they're not going to happen. Now the subcategory is to actually break everything into your calendar. Any of you guys, you know, pretty much live through your calendars. I know I do everything's scheduled in there. And I realized a while back that everything for work is scheduled but my family time wasn't scheduled. The time that I was driving my daughters around to various ice skating and ballet shows and you know practice and all that stuff wasn't in there. And I needed that in there so that whenever I'm just talking with my wife, I can actually, and this helps with negotiation, not just with my wife, but also with myself about saying, hey, I'm spending this much time at work every single week. I'm spending this much time 
with my daughters. I've got my workout time in there scheduled and being able to actually see that and talk with your boss. He maybe doesn't even know how many hours you're working. And if he does, and if he's overworking you, then again, maybe look for another job. But this right here, I know for me, just enable, be able to visually see this is so powerful for being able to make better decisions about where I'm going to be spending my time. It gives me the power and strength, again, to be able to say no to things that do not fit into that alignment with my goals, with where I want to be taking my life. Now, this next tool I think is one that a lot of guys have trouble actually doing because we don't want to basically, we don't want to be a complainer. We don't want to be someone that is bitching about things. But I do think it helps when you talk about things. And there are so many places, yes, hopefully you've got a friend, a few trusted people that will listen to you, not necessarily give you advice, but just listen and be there as a sounding board. And one thing, actually, if you have someone keep you that you respect that maybe is giving you too much advice, just say, hey, you know, do you mind just listening? Because this is what I need right now. Just be clear. People can't read minds. I also find just simply there's threads over in Reddit. Uh, there are Facebook groups where men can actually kind of lay this stuff out there and have a sympathetic ear, somebody that gives them a response. And I know it's sometimes maybe not, they're not always giving you the hard advice that you need to hear, but there is something to be said about just the reassurance knowing that there are other people out there that have gone through this and more importantly, have overcome this. Now, gents, at this point, I want to hear from you guys down in the comments. I know you guys have so much to add and to make this more interesting, I've got quite a few challenge coins I'd love to send your way. For the best comments, we're going to be sending at least probably a dozen challenge coins. All right, gents, so what video to watch next? How about what to do when life is not going as you expected? This happens to a lot of us and in this video, um, I give you my thoughts and uh, again, good video guys. Check it out. Life not going as expected. Boom, right here.